What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next question, still dealing with factoring expressions. This is a pretty cool one. So what we gotta do, we have to write an expression in factored form for each of the shaded areas in these diagrams here. So let's start off with part A. Notice that we have two rectangles, this large rectangle, and then we have this smaller rectangle. Now the large rectangle, it has a length of 6x, a width of 7x, or a width of 7x, or um, interchange, you get what I'm saying. Doesn't matter which one you label which. And then over here, we have a smaller rectangle with length and width of 2y and 7y. And so what we gotta do, we have to find an expression for this shaded area over here. So notice that in this particular case, actually in all of these cases, the shaded area is gonna equal the large area. The large area would be all of it shaded minus the small area. Right, so it would be all of this shaded minus this area over here, which would give us a difference that would give us that shaded area. And that's the same pattern for all of these, same thing here with these rectangles, and then with these circles. Notice we're gonna have a large circle and then a smaller circle, and then the difference between those areas is gonna be that shaded region, same thing over here. Okay, so this is pretty much gonna to apply to all of these. We've got a large area minus a small area. So what we've gotta do, we have to find expressions for each of these. So what's the large area gonna be? Well, it's gonna be seven x times six x. So it's gonna be seven x times six x. That's gonna be the large area. Minus the small area, it's gonna be two y times seven y, right? The area of a rectangle is just length times width. And so from here, Let's expand these first. So here we would have what, 42x squared minus 2y times 7y would give us 14y squared, like that. Okay, so that's the expanded expression for the um, area of the shaded region. They may actually ask for this as well. Here they just went and asked the factor form, but we have to get the expanded one before the factored anyway. So what can we factor from here? Well, between 42 and 14, notice 14 is common. So we can actually take out a 14, and what would we be left with? Well, we divide this by 14, divide this by 14. So 42 divided by 14 would be three. We still have the x squared. Actually, I didn't mention with the variables. Notice that we have an x here, but no x here. We have a y here but no y here. So we can't take out an x or a y. We can only take out that 14 from both of these numbers, 42 and 14. So we'd be left with a three x squared minus the 14s cancel out and we'd be left with a y squared right there. Okay, so that there, let me write the answer here, represents the shaded area, the factored expression for the shaded area of part A. And then let's keep these words here because as I mentioned, they're gonna to apply to all of these. So in this case, the large area, what's the large rectangle? It's gonna be this 8xy. So here there's just gonna be more to work with, more variables, minus the small area, which is gonna be 4x times 4y, like that. Okay, so from here, eight times 12 would give us what? 96 x times x squared, x cubed, y times y, y squared. And then over here, minus 16 x y, like that. Okay, so from here, we gotta now factor this. This is now expanded, we have to factor it. So what can we, let's put the final answer here. What can we take out of this? So between the 96 and 16, Notice that actually 16 is gonna be common in both, which is nice, right? 96 divided by 16 would give us six. 16 divided by 16 would give us one. So 16 goes into both of these. That's the greatest common factor for the numbers. In terms of the variables, we got x3, x1, 
we always take out the one with the lowest, let me actually give myself some room here. So we take out the one with the lowest exponent, right? Which is x to the one. Notice y is common in both, we take out y to the one. So 16xy is actually the greatest common factor over here. So what would we be left with? We would just divide both of these by 16 xy, 96 divided by 16 would give us six. x to the three over x to the one is x to the two. y to the two over y to the one would give us y minus over here, these all just cancel out. We're just left with a one like that. Okay, so this ends up being the, um, the final expression for the shaded area. I'm just checking. Can we further factor this? Can we take anything out? Notice we can't because there's no variables here, x and y, and then between the one and six, there's no other factor. Okay, so that ends up being the answer for part B. Now with part C, notice here we have a small circle. It has a radius x, and then we have a large circle that has a radius y. And if you remember, just in general, let's maybe write it over here, the area of a circle is pi r squared, right? where the r is the radius. So what would be the large circle's area in this case? It would be pi y squared. Right? because the y is the radius of the large circle minus the small area pi x squared, like that. And then from here, we would factor this. Notice we could take out a pi. Can't take out a y because there's no y here. Can't take out an x because there's no x here. So what would we be left with? y squared minus x squared like that. Now this actually, we haven't covered this yet. This is going to be in a future section, but this actually factors. It's a difference of squares. We've covered difference of squares, but going the other way when we're multiplying to get to this, but this actually factors. Um, again, for this section, because we haven't covered it yet, this is the final answer for C. But later on, you're going to see that this bracket, it actually factors further into y minus x and y plus x. So if you factor all the way, it ends up being that. But again, at this point, we haven't covered factoring a difference of squares yet. So you could just leave it like that. You could just take out that pi. But this does factor further in case someone's watching and uh, they start critiquing me. I wanted to cover my basis over here. All right. So it does further factor into this. But again, we haven't covered that yet. So this here ends up being the final answer. So let's write the answer up here just for reference. And then finally, let's, uh, let's do part D. It's another one with circles, except this time the small radius is xy, the large radius is xz. So we would have pi. Uh, the large radius is xz, so all of that would go in brackets and it's going to be squared, right? That's the whole radius that's being squared. You don't want to write xz squared because that would only be squaring the z. You got to square that whole radius minus the small area pi. The radius is xy squared like that. Okay, from here, pi. Um, you could take, because these are multiplying, we could write this, we could take that exponent, we could square the x, we could square the z, so it would be x squared z squared minus pi x squared y squared, like that. And then from here, factoring, notice we could take out a pi from both. We can also take a x squared from both. And so what would we be left with? z squared minus y squared. Can't take out a z because there's no z here, can't take out a y because there's no y here, but the x squared was common. So we could take that out. All right, so this ends up being the final answer. But um, again, like in part C, this is actually a difference of squares. So in case maybe your teacher covered it at this point, this can further factor into z minus y, z plus y. Okay, but if you're still on the section in your class where you're just working with taking out common factors, this would be the final answer but this bracket, just as a heads up, does factor further, and we're gonna get into that in a future section. Okay, so these circled um, expressions are the factored form expressions for the area of the shaded region.